Star Wars 7x7 episode 1840. Today, the second half of our look at that Last Jedi adaptation where we get deeper inside Luke's mind throughout the events of The Last Jedi. Let's go. Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode where we are going to continue our look, finish our look actually, at The Last Jedi Adaptation by Gary Whitta. And specifically we're going to focus on Luke and the moments where we get to get inside his mind thanks to the magic of comic books. First of all, there is a scene in the comic adaptation that does not appear in the movie when basically it takes place before his appearance in The Force Awakens where he is talking about how there's one thing more difficult than any other that his masters never taught him that no Jedi ever teaches to any Padawan and never did that's even more difficult than figuring out how to feel the force and let it in and that is the exercise of blocking it out which is what he is doing on Octo. that's his practice and what it's been for the last 10 years what he's been working to master but he says even you know, with all of that effort, it's not perfect and that sometimes the Force demands to be heard. And that's how he knows that Rey is coming or that someone is coming for him. And so why he is outstanding where he is waiting for her arrival. And his initial evaluations of Rey are not what you'd call positive. He initially thinks of her as a child with a worthless antique and delusions of grandeur. That's his initial reaction and you know, thinking about the lightsaber that she shows up carrying. And he does note that she is strong and focused and that her form is very you know, strong and sophisticated for a novice. Like, you know, that that's very impressive. But that she's still under the sway of her emotions, specifically of anger and wrath and enmity, uh, and I can never pronounce that one, enmity, E-N-M-I-T-Y, and that there's an impetuousness and foolishness and impatience at where she's at in her training, you know, certainly not unlike another former Padawan learner that we might have met a time or two over the years. But he's also looking at it through the lens of what he experienced with Ben Solo and afraid essentially that she's just going to go to the dark side just like he did, that he's not going to be able to have any control over it. And, you know, this is what his fear is. And even Yoda in their conversations on the island talks about how, oh, you know, we lost Ben, but we can't lose Ray. So there's this abiding fear in him that if he starts to train anyone else, that he's going to be training somebody to go over to the dark side as well. So he's actually afraid, for all intents and purposes, that he's going to create more bad guys as the result of his training. There's an extension of the moment where he finds out about Han's death, and that's the beginning of his misgivings about closing him off himself off from the Force so intently, and about how he would have felt... Han's death if he hadn't closed himself off. And there's a beautiful extension of that moment where he and Chewie share an embrace. And he says, it's all right, Chewie, it's all right. And yeah, we, you know, we get an extra little emotional burst by seeing that on the comic page. Now, of course, we've talked about <laughs> here on the show, it's not unique. Everyone has talked about the parallels between Luke and Rey. And so the moment where Luke goes out to Rey where she's sleeping and says, three lessons starting tomorrow. Well, that's right after he and R2 have talked. And in the comic adaptation, there's a little bit of a monologue from Luke about how R2 told Luke Rey's story about, you know, a person from a desert out world who dreamed of something bigger until a droid with secret information showed up. He's like, turns out I'd heard that story once before. Uh, the darkness that he sees in Rey or that, you know, she doesn't seem to be scared of heading toward the dark. That's also something that in his inner monologue, he says, reminds him a little bit of himself as well. And that's also something that makes him fearful about having anything to do with her and training her. That he's basically afraid that he's going to mess it up in that regard too. Or, you know, maybe that 
he isn't going to mess it up, just that maybe he is not able to prevent it from happening. You know, there's only a limit to the amount of control he has on the situation, and he just doesn't want to make things worse. And... Yeah, I guess not everything here is inner monologue stuff because there's more from that scene during the second lesson where when Rey tries to point out, well, you actually saved Darth Vader, Luke says, oh, I wish I'd never told anyone that story. I wish I'd just let it die on the Death Star and that he was just surprised and learned how fast a good tale will spread like wildfire and become a legend in the galaxy. And it put me in mind of the fact that we do have a Myths and Legends book coming out as part of the Journey to the Rise of Skywalker by George Mann, and hopefully we're going to find out more about that book at San Diego Comic-Con this coming week. And then back to inner monologue stuff, he thinks to himself how what the true cost of cutting himself off from the Force has been, not just the cutting off from the Force, but the cutting off from the people that he loves so dearly, and that's when he has his initial connection to Leia. And later on, when he shows up on Crate and faces down the First Order, he says to himself, or thinks to himself, I've been waiting for this for a long time, one final chance to set things right. That's what his focus is as he's going into this battle. And then when Kylo Ren, a.k.a. Ben Solo, realizes what's happening there, <laughs> he says, you know, always save your best trick for last. Like, that's, you know, what a true master does. And so there you go. It's also been reported in various sites that, you know, his final thoughts as he was passing away were to the effect of, you know, and it ends as it began by the light of two suns before stepping into a larger world. And that's how he passes on into the Force. And yeah, that one got a lot of press coverage when it came out, when the actual adaptation came out way back when. But yeah, that pretty much sums up the stuff that we get from Luke's internal monologue and also from the additional moments that Gary Wooda adds into The Last Jedi adaptation in his you know comic book retelling of the tale. And so what this all has to do with The Last Jedi movie? Well, again, after the break. Coming up right now. Stay tuned. This episode is brought to you by Constant Contact, the premier email marketing solution for small businesses and organizations. I've used their service since 2003, and over the past decade and a half, I've watched them evolve, make the product simpler, more powerful, easy to use, and do everything that they can to help train people to use the product more effectively and for it to work with other forms of marketing like social media, for example. So. Check out sw7x7.com slash email to learn more about Constant Contact and start a free trial. Once again, that is sw7x7.com slash email for a free trial. Welcome back. So what this has taught me about The Last Jedi movie, <laughs> and it's a different thing from what it taught me about The Force Awakens. You know, when I read the adaptation for The Force Awakens, it was good, like I enjoyed it, like it was a good job, but it didn't necessarily do anything for me regarding the Force Awakens movie experience. But reading the Last Jedi comic adaptation, I have to say, has enhanced my experience and appreciation for the Last Jedi movie. I mean, I really feel like Ryan Johnson's respect for Star Wars as a franchise and as a mythology is deeper than I necessarily appreciated. And I think that Gary would have kind of spoon fed a little bit of that to me in his adaptation of The Last Jedi. And so, yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to a rewatch of The Last Jedi right now. I can't say that I felt the same way after The Force Awakens read. And again, not a knock necessarily, you know, just different, different works do different things. But in this particular case, the Last Jedi comic adaptation really made me hanker for a new viewing of The Last Jedi and one where I think I'm going to enjoy it even more than the last time I saw it. So I mean, that, I think, is a pretty amazing achievement. So kudos to Gary Wooda and the rest of the creative team that worked on The Last Jedi adaptation. And that is going to do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And if you check out The Last Jedi comic adaptation, let me know what you think of it. And of course, may the force be with you, wherever in the world you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.